Having my PhD in microbiology made me think it would be really fun to share my thoughts on how well I think these authors did at portraying the Spanish flu in their historical fiction books. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a mom to four. I love to homeschool. I love to read good books. And I love to share both of those things on this channel. So I realize that I might be in the minority of people that are interested in reading about pandemics during a global pandemic, but I've always been this way. I just love when I find historical fiction books that portray infectious disease. I have read two books this past year about the Spanish flu, the 1919 Spanish flu, that I wanna share with you today. So my plan is to do a spoiler-free comparison of the two books. To start with, how did I rate them? I gave this a five out of five stars, still probably my favorite book of 2020. And I gave this one a four out of five stars. I loved it, it was really good. And I didn't dock a star because of the science. But first I guess I should just tell you what the stories are about. So, As Bright as Heaven by Susan Meisner. This is a story about the flu in Philadelphia and it follows a family. And so this family, there's a mom and dad and three girls. They move in from the country into the city of Philadelphia when the dad is offered to um, help with his uncle's business, which is a mortuary. And so that's kind of early in the book, that's part of the setup. And then the flu hits, and it's a really intense part of the book, but then it stops and you kind of see life afterwards. So it has a pretty long timeline, and the story itself is told through the perspective of the three girls. So the three girls are Evelyn, Maggie, and Willa. And I think they're younger, so I'd say like the youngest was like five and the oldest was maybe like 12 or something during the Spanish flu. And some of the reasons I loved this book was I just felt very emotionally invested in the family and just their struggles and their hardships and kind of coming off of the flu and everything that happened there and the people that died that they knew. And then they also adopted or took in this orphan, this flu, orphan is a little baby boy I think Alex was his name and they just loved him and raised him and there's some hard parts of that plot too but it was just a very beautiful story but that's just the general picture of this book which I've been recommending to almost everybody the other book is the pull of the stars by Emma Donahue this book just came out in 2020 so it's a fairly new release and I also loved it this is told from the perspective of a nurse her name is Julia in Ireland and she works in a maternity ward for flu victims. Any woman who's pregnant about to give birth but also has the flu gets put into kind of this quarantined ward if you will and she's the nurse in charge and then there's also a couple other characters that are important. There's a doctor that's of importance and she has kind of a unique storyline and then there's this helper who's also like an orphan. So it's not just the nurse but it's told from the nurse's perspective and it has a much shorter timeline. So it had, I think it was like covered maybe three or four days. And this is set in a hospital where the other book was set more in a home, a mortuary, mind you, which had its own kind of associations with the flu. But this is set in the hospital midway through the epidemic. And so they were losing doctors. They were short staffed. They had not very much stuff sort of idea. So it was really, really good. I really felt invested in her character and the nurse's character. I was definitely rooting for her. Although it is a maternity ward, and so this is one disclaimer, I probably wouldn't recommend you read this if you are pregnant because it does have some kind of horrific scenes that are not really flu related and I'm not really spoiling anything, but it would have been much harder to read this if I was pregnant at the time of reading it. So that really tackles the basic storylines of both books. But now I wanna talk about the science. I felt like both books did an actually a really excellent job of portraying the disease. I think they both pulled out details that were unique and kind of had a different perspective, a different angle of looking at the pandemic in each book. So it's kind of cool because they're both correct, in my opinion. They just looked at it differently. So let me get into it. So for instance, with As Bright as Heaven, I think this book did an excellent job at portraying kind of the sickness and the illness and the spread. For instance, you get to see that like in the case of Philadelphia there was this like war parade because the Spanish flu happened during World War One, so there was this like war parade I think I don't think it was like a victory war parade I think it was more of like raise money and morale sort of parade in Philadelphia that the whole town turned out for and that's where kind of the flu was spread and then it was so contagious 
that it just went from there in Philadelphia at least. And so that was a good portrayal of just how infectious and how contagious the virus was. It also did a, a good job of describing some of the volunteers. So there was a number of volunteers, especially from different like church organizations that would go around and try and help people. And they would like cover themselves in scarves because they understood that it was airborne and you could get sick, but it probably didn't do much to help in all honesty but they felt like that would help. Also did a great job of just really making you feel the fact that the virus kind of went from house to house to house to house. And that's true. That's what it would just go through neighborhoods and it would just spread. And there wasn't much to stop it from spreading. Honestly, mostly because, especially in Philadelphia, a lot of people all got it at once and then scattered to their circles and then started spreading it. And then it brought in the scariness of the fact that there was just so many people dying and the author I thought it was pretty clever that she brought in the mortuary business so not only was this happening to their family their neighbors their friends but the flu victims were kind of piling up in the mortuary there was no place to put them so you got to see a little bit of how the business was affected and just the economy of Philadelphia was affected and just it was just really interesting and like I said the book covers before and after the pandemic which I thought was really good because it could bring in a bit of the atmosphere, kind of the fear that was happening after the pandemic lifted. So even though it was gone, nobody was getting sick anymore, people had changed their behavior and the atmosphere was just different. And I thought that was just really, really interesting. And maybe that's just in light of our current culture that I really tuned into that. So to move on to the science from the pull of the stars. So I thought, the author did a great job in here too. It just took a different perspective. The setting is a hospital. So this book did a lot more work describing symptoms and focusing on symptoms and treatments. And I thought it did a really good job on the symptoms. The symptoms were really good, especially in this highly susceptible group of people. Pregnant women are always more susceptible to all infections when they're pregnant. And the author did a good job of keeping it very much to the time frame. So this is early 1900s, so what's the medicine like there? What kind of drugs do they use? What kind of procedures are they using? So it was very interesting. It was like, oh my gosh, they used to do that. They used to use these forceps. They used to give pregnant women alcohol, a lot of it, which is just not done today. Then on top of it, they had this doctor who was female, which was rare in those days, and more academic, and she was interested in how this infectious agent was working, and they all assumed it was a bacteria because the bacterias were all that had been cultured and identified in the early 1900s. Viruses weren't identified until later on. And so they did this like autopsy on one of the victims, and the doctor was talking about the fact that they can't even culture it, they can't see it under a microscope, and that's just fascinating and it makes sense because viruses are about 10 times smaller than bacteria so you couldn't see it under a microscope without like an electron microscope or a higher powered microscope and it wouldn't grow in bacterial media it needs viral methods to propagate and grow in culture and so it was just really interesting to feel what it must have felt like to be a part of the medical profession when the 1919 flu hit I didn't know that much and they were figuring a ton of stuff out and it just sounded really really fascinating to conclude, I would say the virus and the pandemic of the 1919 Spanish flu were both well represented in both of these books. They just did it a little differently. Like I said, the pull of the stars focuses a bit more on symptoms and as bright as heaven focuses more on spread and contagiousness and things like that. And so I would recommend both. I really enjoyed both books. I mean, from my background, I think they both did a good job I also think it wasn't too technical to the fact that you'd have to be like a microbiologist to enjoy it. By no means is that the case. I think I just am able to pull out more interesting tidbits just because of my background. That's what I have for this video. But comment down below, let me know if you are drawn to pandemic books during this global pandemic because I feel like I keep getting messages that are like, you're crazy that you're even picking up these books. and. That's just me. I know that. But I, I bet there's some of you out there that also enjoy reading this at this point in history. So please share. And yeah, that's all I have. So please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And then I will see you in the next book video. So have a wonderful day and I will see you later. Okay.